questions will be answered as we get into these next case scenarios. So let's jump into Austin Travis County with Commander Chris Lester. Chris is the Commander of Homeland Security and Emergency Management for Austin Travis County EMS. Chris Lester is a nationally registered paramedic and has been involved in EMS for the past 17 years. He's currently a commander with Austin Travis County EMS and is assigned to a field operations district that is over Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Thank you, Chris, for having me. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. A uh, little, little backstory on uh, Austin Travis County EMS, a little demographic information. Uh, we're located in Central Texas. Um, we're the city of Austin's third public safety agency. We have a response area of about uh, 1,039 square miles, serving a population of around 2.2 million, and uh, run about 139,000 calls annually. Uh, we manage that with <clears throat> 43 on-duty analysts and nine peak load units as well, um, and also six uh, district commanders. So it's going to go across some of the uh, the things we're using uh, mobilely to uh, to help manage this crisis of uh, of COVID-19. Um, as you'll see, we use several different platforms and for different reasons, but uh, I'll touch on each one of those independently. Um, at the beginning of this, we started uh, what's called the COVID Clinical Consult Line, or CCL or 3CL. We love acronyms around here, so um, it, it kind of goes by all of them. Um, this group is composed of field providers who are currently assigned to the Medical Operations Center and also uh, Austin Public Health. Uh, these providers hold a credential that provides them the ability um, to initiate paramedic-initiated non-transports. Uh, the overall goal being to keep COVID patients with mild symptoms at home doing self-care and utilizing other avenues of medical evaluation and treatment, like telemedicine, uh, their PCP, walk-in clinics, et cetera, instead of being transported to the ED. Uh, this has many benefits. One major benefit for us is keeping the exposure risk of our providers down to a minimum to help reduce the risk and spread of infection. Initially, this group was stationed at uh, Austin Public Health in a little conference room, but we could quickly see that uh, that location was not going to be able to uphold the amount of call volume that we would be receiving uh, related to COVID-19. Uh, so we moved down to um, our communication center uh, where our call takers dispatched 911 calls. Uh, <clears throat> this gave us the ability to use the technology that our dispatchers use and uh, gave us that technology as well uh, for dispatch as well as um, some extra computer resources for risk stratification of public safety personnel that are exposed to COVID-19. Um, using this, um, these folks have been able to reduce the uh, amount of ambulances sent to COVID-19 type calls by roughly about 30%. Uh, the folks that fall in these 30% are assisted with telemed options, walk-in clinics, information how to get tested, et cetera. We're using a uh, platform called Apricot Social Solutions uh, to capture all the data um, from the 911 calls we're screening and then also um, the public safety risk stratification calls that we receive um, from other public safety folks. Um, this enables us to get the who, when, what, and where of each contact and also allows us to quickly see if somebody has called more than one time, uh, how they've been assisted up to that point, and um, you know, if, if what we have done is working for them. Um, the hope is that after this COVID-19 crisis is over, the data that we're able to pull from the system will help uh, support the fact that uh, we need something like this to continue uh, to be in our system. Uh, one of the uh, new features that we're using <clears throat> in relation to uh, mobile technology is Pulsera. Uh, we started using this at the beginning of the COVID response. Um, since we started using it, it's shown to be very valuable to us regarding uh, information, uh, providing information to responding crews before they arrive during scene care, <clears throat> during scene care and also transport. It also allows us um, to pass this information on to the hospital so they can pre-register the patient and also decide who needs to be there upon arrival based on the information uh, provided to them in the app. We've also been able to use the video conferencing feature a few times. Uh, we've used it to initiate some paramedic-initiated non-transports where we just needed more information 
from what we were getting over the seat, over the phone, we could utilize the video feature of pushing it to the patient, and we could actually see the situation they're in and actually how they look at the uh, present moment. Um, it's also come in handy a few times um, with some of our crews being on patients, uh, on COVID patients um, that have multiple other issues going on as well. And the crews have been able to video conference uh, one of our on-call medical directors. That's been able to give that physician uh, an opportunity to see exactly what situation the uh, paramedics are dealing with at that time, and uh, which allows them to give the best uh, information available to you know to make the to provide the most appropriate care for that patient at that time. Um, currently, we're looking into expanding the role a little bit uh, using Pulsera to one of our ISOFAC facilities. Um, these facilities hold um, PUIs that are unable to self-isolate on their own. And uh, utilizing Pulsera in this facility, we're able to uh, push this to each uh, PUI in the facility and providers on the floor taking care of them are able to uh, FaceTime with them instead of donning and doffing PPE and going through that process of uh, donning and doffing just to get simple things like uh, temp checks and things like that. Um, it also provides the ability to log um, the contacts in there uh, with vital signs and everything. So if something does happen and the patient does need to be transported to the hospital for some reason, all that information can be pressed to the uh, receiving hospital so they can see what's been going on uh, with the patient since they have been in the isolation facility. Um, <clears throat> with the start of this as well, uh, having such a large population, uh, we knew testing was going to be an issue uh, both from public safety and critical infrastructure standpoint as well as the public. Um, so we, uh, the city itself came up with an um, open enrollment form. Uh, this, this link has gone through several changes, but the goal has always remained the same, which, are, which was to provide a quick way for people to get enrolled for drive through testing for COVID. Uh, it gathers some demographic data as to which populations are utilizing the enrollment form and if there are public safety, critical infrastructure, and also the symptoms they are currently experiencing. Um, this has been pushed out to the general public uh, recently as well to make it easier for them to enroll as well. Uh, the last bit that we're using to uh, respond to this pandemic is uh, EM Resource. <clears throat> We've been using EM Resource for a while in our system. Uh, this allows the crews to look at the status of a hospital, see how busy they are and what resources are available at that facility, all of this from a mobile device. Um, this additional information helps the crews determine the most appropriate transport destination based upon clinical findings and the crew's differential diagnosis. Um, currently for the code response, um, the hospitals are updating the availability of vents, ICU beds, ED beds, et cetera, for uh, every 12 hours. If the hospital systems become inundated with COVID patients, they will be updating the EMA resource more frequently, which allow patient navigation personnel and the medical operations center to help coordinate transportation for the EMS systems in the region for the most appropriate facility, um, which that bit of technology marries pretty well with Pulsera, you know, trying to get the, the patients to the right resources if, if they need to, do need to be transported. And uh, that's, about wraps up about what we're doing with mobile technology here in uh, Austin Childs County. Great, thanks Commander Lester. This is amazing stuff and you guys really have set the standard of saying, hey, let's get a hold of these patients early. Let's bring in dispatch early. Let's actually help provide resources to update in real time this patient care and let's notify the hospital early and then they can be part of this process and uh, both innovative and forward thinking in a new world we live in. As Thank we transition much. over, yeah, thanks Les, uh, Chris Lester. Let's see, as we trans transition in over to Williamson County, I was gonna answer two more questions and they're about cell cover cell service or using in a helicopter. And uh, I think aviation overall uh, what we're seeing is EMS services are following their local best practices, protocols, procedures of when they can or cannot use mobile technology 
um, or cell phone technology in their aircraft, um, and typically alerting the hospital or communicating on scene or prior to liftoff in the areas that they can't discuss or use, you know, cell phone coverage um, in their aircraft. And then the second question is, what about rural areas? What about cell coverage? What about difficulties in contacting? And it's a great question, it's a valid question. And the quick answer is, you're right. If there's not connectivity, we can't do uh, any communicating, right? And in some places, radio communication may be, and repeaters may be our only opportunity. And yet what we're seeing out there is a number of technologies come out that have greatly increased uh, the rural broadband coverage. The first one I would be remiss if I didn't bring up FirstNet, which is a dedicated broadband platform for us, public safety, that gives us both priority and preemption, which means it allows us to have dedicated bandwidth with an agreement to really uh, have increased coverage across the entire nation. You have pro areas where it's very congested and there's buildings and it's very urban and cell coverage is terrible. And you also have rural areas where there isn't any coverage or cell towers and your mobile phone uh, usage is terrible. And so uh, FirstNet in partnership with AT&T is doing a great job of uh, working through that, uh, especially in the first five years of that contract to get as much coverage up and going as they can. And then there's a number of technologies out there. The first one that comes to mind is Alario. Alario allows you, it's basically a high-end modem router that's small enough to be part of your stuff you can carry into a house. It's mobile, and it puts in a number of SIM cards in there. So you could have a FirstNet SIM card, a, I don't know, Verizon or AT&T SIM card, and a T-Mobile SIM card, for example. And then it automatically swaps back and forth between whatever's the best coverage at that time, and it's seamless to the end provider.